What? 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 Newborn baby bee boo bee 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 bee. Back, 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 Start again. What the heck? Cry. Wait a second. Hi, crafty people. Today I'm sharing with you four excellent projects that you could make to gift to someone for a baby shower gift or for a new baby. Most of the tutorials on my channel are sewing related, but today I've actually got some crochet tutorials for you as well. If this is your first time on my channel, then welcome. My name is Marie and this channel is all about motivating mums to make and mend. The four different projects that we're making today are a crochet beanie with little teddy bear ears, some baby booties with a ribbed cuff, a high contrast crinkle taggy toy and a dribble bib with some snap fastenings. If you're here because you want to learn how to make one of these projects in particular, check the description box down below and I'll put the timestamps where each of these projects start in case you're just interested in learning one of these. If you do enjoy this video as you're watching it, don't forget to press the like button down below which shows YouTube that this is a great video for you. So with all of that being said, let's get making. My mum makes baby gifts. The first project that we're going to be making is this crocheted newborn sized beanie with the teddy bear ears. The beanie itself is very easy, it only uses half double crochets, so if you can do that stitch or if you want to learn it today, then you should be able to make the structure of this beanie pretty easily. The ears are a little bit more challenging, but I'll go through how to make them as well. So let's start by making the beanie part of this hat. The yarn I'm using is an 8 ply acrylic and wool blend and I have a J hook which is 5.75 millimeters. Start by making a magic circle and we're going to work our first round of 10 half double crochets into our magic circle. To do a half double crochet you're going to put your yarn around your hook and then your hook through your magic circle. Then you're going to pick up another piece of yarn so that you've got three loops on your hook. Yarn around your hook again and pull through all three loops. Work 10 half double crochets into your magic circle and then you're going to slip stitch onto your first stitch. To do that, you're going to insert your hook into your first stitch, pick up the yarn and draw it through all of your loops. Then with the loose thread at the back of your work, you're going to pull that tight so that it draws the center of your magic circle together so there is no hole at the top of your beanie. Then you're going to chain two stitches ready to start round two. For round two, you're going to do one half double crochet at the base of your two chain, and then you're going to do two half double crochets in each of your stitches going around your beanie, so that in total, you have 20 half double crochets. So you're going to do your two half double crochets in each stitch the whole way around, and when you get back to the beginning of your circle, you're going to again slip stitch it to attach it to your first stitch, and chain two ready for round three. For round three, you're going to do one half double crochet in the base of your chain two, and then you're going to repeat the pattern of doing one half double crochet in the next stitch and then two in the stitch following that. So repeating that pattern the entire way around your circle until you end up with 30 half double crochets in total. Once you get the whole way around your circle, you're going to slip stitch into the first stitch again and do two chain stitches ready to start round four. For round four, we are again going to do a half double crochet in the bottom of our chain two. And then we're going to be doing one half double crochet in the next eight stitches. And then in the ninth stitch, we're going to be doing two half double crochets in that stitch. And again, we're going to repeat this pattern the whole way around, doing one half double crochet in the next eight stitches. And then in the ninth stitch, doing two half double crochets in that stitch. Again, when you get back to the beginning, you're going to slip stitch to attach it to your first stitch and chain two ready for the next round. The rest of the rounds from here are very easy because you're just going to continue to do a half double crochet stitch into all of the stitches you have already done in a spiral, continuing until we have enough rows to fit on the person's head. So I've put a little safety pin to mark where the beginning of my row was, but I'm just doing a half double crochet all the way around until I get back to that pin and then continuing. No chain, just continue around doing half double crochets even past that pin. But the pin that I have there is just to help me remember what row I'm up to because I want to do nine rows of half double crochet in total. So I did four of my rows where I was increasing the number of stitches and I'm going to do an extra five rows where I'm just going around doing half double crochets in all of the stitches. Now once I get to row number nine, I'm going to change the color of my thread so that I can do another five rows using my blue wool. So from here, it's both very easy and very repetitive, so I decided I would move over to the couch so I could be a bit more comfortable. 
This is the perfect sort of project to be doing while watching the footy, even if your team is losing. Continue around until you have 14 rows in total and then we are ready to start making the ears for our beanie. We're going to start with a magic circle again and this time do six single crochets into our circle. To do a single crochet, you're going to put your hook through your magic circle and pull your yarn through so that you have two loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over again and draw it through both loops. You're going to do six single crochets into your magic circle, but once you've done all six, you're not going to join it together in a circle. You're just going to flip your work over and we're going to stitch in the stitch closest to our hook. We're going to be doing two single crochets in th that stitch and then two single crochets in each of the stitches going down our row so that we have 12 stitches in total. Then we're going to flip our work again so we can work back down the row for our round. For round three, you're going to do a single crochet in the next two stitches and then you're going to repeat a pattern of doing two single crochets in the next stitch and then one single crochet in the next stitch and then two single crochets in the next stitch and then one single crochet in the next stitch until you get to the end. Then you're going to turn your work again ready for round four. For round four, you're simply going to do a single crochet in each of your stitches all the way around to get to the end. At this point we have an arch shape and we're ready to start round five. And round five and six we're going to start decreasing our stitches in order for the top of the teddy bear ear to fold over and have a bit more of a three dimensional shape. So in order to do that we're going to introduce a stitch called single crochet two together. So in order to do this instead of picking up just the two loops of one stitch you're going to also pick up the two loops of a stitch next to it and then complete your single crochet so that it draws those two stitches together. You'll have to check the pattern linked in the description box if you want to see exactly where to put these single crochet two together because it's a bit too tricky for me to explain you might as well just read the pattern for yourself but round five and six both involve those single crochets two together which is what gives the top of that ear the three-dimensional flipped over look. After row six you can cut off your yarn and do a slip stitch to hold the thread in place and then you're going to pull the other thread from when we made the magic circle so that the ear will draw in nicely and be a bit more circular in shape. Then your ears are ready to stitch onto your hat so you're going to thread a darning needle and just hand stitch the ears into place. I put them parallel to each other although slightly more towards the front of the hat really than towards the back and just hand stitch them so that they stay in place and then tying a knot with the loose threads on the inside of the hat once I'm done. I'll put some footage here of my kids wearing some beanies like this, not this one exactly because this one's heading off to America with the rest of this present, but I'll show you some photos of my kids wearing similar beanies to this. The way the ears are made on these beanies, they do stick up nicely so that they're not flopping around. And the other thing that I also like to add to these hats is a little flower. If I'm making them on my girls' hats, I uh, sometimes add a flower. You could change the colors, have more than two colors, or it could all be just one solid color. It's up to you. But I think the actual making process of this beanie is a really beginner-friendly one, and hopefully one that you can adapt to make it suitable for whoever you're giving a gift to. So now that we have finished explaining how to make our newborn beanie, we're going to move on and explain how to make these matching little baby booties with this ribbed cuff. I've only recently learned how to make newborn baby booties like this, which I would have liked to have known how to make these when I had my own little newborns, but now Ruben's feet are a little bit bigger than this. I can upsize these a bit. I'll leave a link to the pattern in the description box if you are wanting to learn how to make booties like this, and it will show you which hook size to use for different size booties that you want to make. So now I'll show you how I made these newborn baby booties. I'm using an E hook for this project, which is a 3.5 millimeter hook. And this time I'm not starting with a magic circle. I'm going to actually start by chain stitching. You're going to chain 10 and then work your half double crochets down the row of your chain stitches. You'll have to check the pattern that I have linked to see how many half double crochets you need to do in each of your stitches going down your chain. And then when you get to the end of your chain, you're going to be working down the other side of your chain to get back up to the top again so that you're able to slip stitch into your first half double crochet stitch to complete round one. For round two and three, you're going to be using single crochets and half double crochets at various points in your round. We're making the sole of the booty at the moment and the single crochets are in the narrow part of your foot 
and the half double crochets in the wider part of your foot near the ball of the foot and the heel so that it makes it a little bit wider at those points. So as you go around your round two and three, you're going to be doing some half double and some single crochet stitches to make that shape. I've done the first three rounds of this booty, which completes the sole, and next we'll be doing the uh, upper and then the cuff. And uh, this project here is probably maxing out my crochet ability or maxing out my mum brain, one of the two. So if you're better at crochet than me, this might be easy, but for me, this is as hard as I'm willing to tackle. The next step is for us to start the upper and in order for us to sort of change directions from being flat to going up the side, we're only going to be using one side of our, our stitch here. So we're only going to be looping in the back stitch of the two threads that make up each stitch. We're only using the back thread and that will change the direction of our stitches to be going up the side of the booty. So for round four, you're going to do a half double crochet in the back loop only the whole way around. And then for round five, you're going to do a single crochet in all the stitches going around, again, just in the back loop only. At this point, it should start to look like a bit of a shallow boat shape. And then in round six, we're going to start shaping the front of the booty to go over the foot. I'm going around row six and the same as when I did the first one, I seem to have some issues where I'm doing the double crochets that are meant to bulk out this top part here and for some reason they're all coming on the side and then I undo it and I try it again and it seems to be I don't know what I'm doing we're gonna have to undo round six because I can't seem to get it to work and I'll try it again don't worry, I did work out what the problem was and I am going to share with you how I fixed my problem in case as you're doing this you have the same problem as me. But I wanted to keep all of my mistakes in here because I want my tutorials to always be realistic and helpful and for you to know that we all make mistakes and it's just part of the learning process. I was getting myself a bit confused when I was doing my double crochet two together, so joining two of my stitches together using the double crochet, but in doing so, you have so many loops going on and off of your hook that it was getting a little bit confusing for me. So what I found easier was to just hook into the front loop only of the two stitches that I was joining together. So just the front loop of these two stitches here and then pulling it through to then do my normal double crochet. That seemed to be my main stumbling block with this pattern and where I forgot to count my stitches at one point. But the pattern was actually really good to use. I still did enjoy it, even though it was pushing the limits of what I'm capable of with my crochet. So once you've finished round six, seven and eight, which involve double crochets, half double crochets and double crochets two together, then you've completed the whole upper structure of the booty, ready to then start on the cuff. I changed the colour of the wool that I was using so that I could make the cuff and thankfully the cuff making process was actually quite easy. You start by chaining 9 stitches and then you're going to go down that row of chains doing single crochets. Then you're going to go back up the row of chains again doing single crochets but in the back loop only and then turning your stitching going back down again doing single crochets in the back loop only. Doing this over and over again is what causes the ribbing effect because you're only using the back of your stitches. So this is how it's looking so far. And I'm down here, so I'm going to slip stitch the cuff to this part of the upper here. And then we'll go back up the cuff again, continuing more rows until we go the whole way around. So. Olympics time. It was nice and easy and repetitive to make the cuff process so it was the perfect part of the project to be doing in front of the Olympics and then when that was done I was able to slip stitch the rest of the cuff together so that it was a complete circle around the ankle. Then after that I was able to snip off my yarn and thread through all of my threads into the booty and make sure that they were all secured and the booties were all complete. So now that we've finished learning how to make these newborn baby booties, we're going to move on and learn how to make a crinkle tangy toy. I really like making these for newborns because I put high contrast satin on the back and then a sort of decorative, more soft fabric on the front. And having these tags is a great sort of sensory stimulation and they love to chew on them. And of course, babies love the crinkle noise. 
of the plastic that is inside. For this one here, I have used a baby safe plastic that I have bought that's specifically designed for baby toys like this, but you can also just use the insert from a cereal box. These are always one of the first toys that my kids are able to play with because they're easy to grasp and chew on and they just love the sensory stimulation of these toys. So now I'll show you how I made this taggy toy. I started with a 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter piece of flannelette and I am pinning on my little tags, which are just pieces of ribbon to the edge of the taggy toy. I have the ribbons folded in half with the two raw edges against the side of my flannelette and pinning them down ready to sew. I sew around each of the tags using a zigzag stitch and I go forwards and backwards and forwards again over the tags just to make sure they're really secure because this is going to be a point where the baby is pulling and chewing and they're just going to need to be very secure so that it's safe for the baby going to put all the layers of our taggy toy together now. So I have a piece of polar fleece which will go in the inside to provide some softness. I have some high contrast satin which I put facing up which will be the back of my taggy toy. Then I have the taggy part of my flannelette facing down against the backing and then I have my crinkle plastic on top. I'm going to pin all of these together so that I can sew all four of my layers together, leaving a gap so that I'm able to then turn the whole taggy toy in the right way once I have finished sewing around it, just using a straight stitch. I then chop off any of the excess fabric around the outside of my taggy toy and reach in through the hole to take out any pins on the inside so I don't spike myself when I turn the taggy toy out the right way. Then I use my chopstick to push out the corners and I'm going to hand stitch the hole closed which I did off camera. Then the last step of this taggy toy is to top stitch around the outside of it, just a decorative stitch to keep everything nice and flat and also just so it looks nice. I've chosen to use orange because I think it's a contrasting color that will look nice against the colors of the taggy toy. So that was how I made this taggy toy right here. But if you are looking for some more details about how to make taggy toys or how to get the plastic inserts from cereal boxes that I use on the inside of some of these crinkle taggy toys. I've made a video before all about taggy toys, so if you would like more details, you can watch that video. I'll link that video in the description box. You can watch that after. But now we're going to move on and I'm going to show you how I made this dribble bib with these snap fastenings. I'll link the pattern pieces that I used to cut out my bib shape. You just need to print it on an A4 piece of paper. And then I cut them out on my flannelette first, the same flannelette as I used for my taggy toy. And then placing that face down, I pinned it onto my backing fabric, which in this case, I'm using some white polar fleece. I'm cutting around them and that way I have both my front and back all pinned together ready to sew, which makes it easier than cutting the two shapes out separately and then pinning them together. I'm sewing around the outside of my bib using a straight stitch. I'm going to leave a gap so that I can turn my bib out the right way in a minute. I left the gap on one of the straight edges because it will make it easier to close over in a minute. Before I do turn my bib out the right way though, I use my pinking shears to chop all of the curved edges of my bib, which will help it to be a little less bulky when I do turn it in the right way. You could just use fabric scissors and cut notches along those curved parts if you like. Then with my bibs turned out the right way, I'm going to top stitch the entire way around the bib. I'm going to start with the part that is the hole that needs to be closed over and I'm actually going to top stitch very close to the edge of the bib. I close over the hole first and then I top stitch the rest of the way around the bib. And when I'm doing this, I'm making sure that the top thread is matching the top part of the bib and my bobbin is matching the color of the bottom part of my bib. So in this case, I have a white bobbin. The last thing we need to do is to add the snaps so that we're able to close the bib over. So I have this very handy snaps machine that I have gotten from Snaps Australia. I'll have them linked in the description box down below if you want to get one of these snap machines for yourself. It's not an affiliate link. It's just a small business that I think is worth supporting. So I use my snap machine to have the different settings, one for the front and one for the back of the snap. And then I make a second snap hole on the back of the bib so that I'm able to have two different neck size settings depending on the size of the baby who is using the bib. Dribble bibs are always really handy to have and you can sort of never have too many of them. So I'm sure this would make an excellent, very easy to make gift 
for a new mum, especially if it was handmade by you with a fabric that you think would suit them. These are also a great way to use up fabric from your stash because as you can see it doesn't use very much and you can use basically any sort of absorbent fabric on the front and then uh, just a polar fleece or any sort of fleecy um, fabric on the back that's going to repel the spit from going onto their chest. I have previously made a different video about making dribble bibs when I made them for my daughter Alice when she was about 9 or 10 months old when she was teething and they were slightly bigger than this and I used velcro to attach them instead of snaps. So if you would like to watch that tutorial I'll leave it linked in the description box down below you might like to watch that one after this as well. So there we have it. All four of our projects are now complete. We have our crochet beanie, our little baby booties, taggy toy and a dribble bib. I hope that you enjoy making these if you do make these for a baby shower or new baby gift. And if you have enjoyed this tutorial as you're watching it, don't forget to leave a like down below and subscribe to come back and see some of my future videos. I'll also leave linked in the description box a playlist of all of the projects that I've made that are suitable for babies that you might like to watch next. I also wanted to mention that I'm starting a new community-based segment at the end of my YouTube videos from now on, and I'm calling it Show My Sew. And in this segment, what I'll be doing is I'll be sharing one of your projects on my channel so that other people can see some inspiration and projects from other creative people just like you. So if you have made a project that you're really proud of, maybe it's something that you've made from one of my tutorials, maybe it's your own idea or a pattern that you really liked using, or maybe it's something that you make to sell, I'd love to share that with my viewers as well. You can use the hashtag ShowMySew when you share one of your projects on Instagram or Facebook, and that will help me to be able to see what I can share with our community here. So if you would like your project to be featured on my channel, then again, you can share it with the hashtag ShowMySew, and I'll be picking one of your projects each week to share on my channel so that we can build up the community here and help to share our ideas with each other. So thank you for joining me today as I shared these DIY baby shower gift ideas. And until next time, go get creative and I'll see you later.